All right, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Again, for the record, my name is Michael Miles. I'm Deputy Director of the CCB. Uh, this workshop is a preliminary workshop, and the staff is presenting uh, potential regulatory changes and updates for comment uh, from the industry and the public to hear, as well as to listen to changes the industry and public might want to see in a revision to laboratory regulations. Changes put together after today will not be presented to the board for approval as the CCB is now under the APA. Any new language will have to be given to the LCB for review and a future workshop date will have to be selected, likely for this one in February. Staff wanted to do these preliminary workshops for several topics like labs, right now packaging and labeling next month, and an overall structural change to Regulation 4, which will be held in November. Again, these are preliminary workshops and all the APA requirements will be adhered to for all three of these topics before changes can be made to the regulations. Uh, before I move on to agenda item one, I want to ask that all comments about lab regulations be given during the appropriate agenda item. Uh, we can, Chief Cronkite here will be going through and breaking down each one of them. She's going to have uh, periods for comment in between uh, the various chunks of the regs that we're going to go over. Uh, agenda two, uh, again, is language changes from the, st the staff are recommending. And agenda item three will be an open period for industry and the public to present any changes to the laboratory regulations that they would like to see. All right, and we'll uh, move forward with uh, agenda item one, uh, public comment. Sarah, go ahead. And Provide public comment via telephone, call 669-444-9171. Enter webinar ID 878-1275-9864, followed by passcode 312608. Thanks, Sarah. And we'll start down here in Las Vegas. Anybody want to present public comment? Not discuss anything about the lab laboratory rigs? <laughs> All right, we have no comment down here. Up, up north, any public comment up north? No public okay. comment up north. Okay. Sorry, that was Dave. This is me walking up. Uh, Sarah, is there any uh, online comment? There's no online comment. All right, let's let's move forward to agenda item number two then. And again, I'll turn it over to Director Cronkite. Good morning. Um, today I'll be going over the initial draft of the proposed amendments to NCCR 5, 7, and 11 re regarding laboratory analysis requirements. I'll open it up for public comment at different points throughout. If there's a regulation you would like to propose a change to that was not mentioned, please hold those comments or suggestions till the end. Um, please remember to only comment on the portion of the regulations that was just discussed. Additionally, if there are any changes you disagree with or would like added, please submit your proposed language along with the source um, where applicable. And um, you can send that to me directly to the laboratory email directly or to public comment. Um, we did receive a lot of good feedback online already, so I'm really looking forward to some of the comments today. I will go ahead and start with regulations five and seven. And CCR 5.075 has one proposed change that would allow for independent testing laboratories to be inspected at least biennially rather than annually as currently written. Um, and CCR 7.035 has one proposed change that requires a sales facility to provide a copy of the COA to the consumer upon request. This could be electronically or in any other medium as desired. Additionally, some language is stricken just as cleanup. Are there any public comments on NCCR 5 or 7 in Las Vegas? Okay, none here. Are there any public comments on NCCR 5 or 7 in Carson City? And any public comments online? There's no comment online. Okay, moving on. Um, 
NCCR 11.010 makes changes to requirements for the scientific director, allowing an interim director and their allowing for an interim director and um, describing their duties. Scientific director um, residing in the state of Nevada is consistent with other types of laboratories regulated in the state, including Metro, SNHG, and wastewater. 11.015 is actually an error as written. Um, this section is not being stricken completely as it shows currently. Our intention was just to add a subject, subsection four regarding requirements for a safety program. And I apologize for the confusion there. And CCR 11.020 now includes a timeline to provide the board agents with a copy of the ISO final inspection report. And CCR 11.025 clarifies references, standards, practices, and procedures that laboratories are currently using. We're just adding, updating, adding updated information and making it clearer. Um, additionally, I'd like to point out that these are references that can be used when standard method is not available or does not fully speak to the process. They do not all have to be followed at once. Using any of these as applicable would be acceptable until standard methods are developed. And NCCR 11.030 clarifies sample collection requirements, which are already standard practice in most laboratory settings. Okay, are there any public comments in Las Vegas on NCCR 11.010 through 11.030? Hi. Adam Fulton with the law firm of Jennings and Fulton. Um, I represent every single laboratory in the state. Alicia Ashcraft of the law firm of Armstrong Teasdale um, here today on behalf of G3 Labs, but also joining the collective comments that Mr. Fulton will be referring to here shortly. For the record, I'm Kimberly Madsen Rushton with the law firm Cooper Levinson, appearing on behalf of Lettuce Test LLC also joining my colleagues with respect to the collective comments and also appearing on the Citizens for, for Public Safety Alliance. Thank you. Um, so we sent you guys a letter. And so I don't know that you want me to go through the, it's a 13 page letter that addresses many issues in the um, proposed regulations. So I don't know that you want me to spend all the time going through everything today. Um, Pick out the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think, uh, and maybe I'll let Alicia come on this. I think one of the, one of the things we want to focus on with the CCB is we see all these regulations, right, and uh, changes. And the the question is, what what is what is the CCB trying to solve, right? What what issues are being addressed so that the labs can properly evaluate? Hey. Um, we understand what you're trying to resolve. And so maybe we can propose some different language or alternative language that addresses that issue because many of the proposals, and it's again, outlined in my letter, mm -hmm. um, some of the proposed regulation changes, like for instance, aren't even feasible from a scientific standpoint, right? Like the labs just simply can't do it based on what's being proposed. Um, but we needed further uh, help from the CCB to understand why things are being proposed so that we can maybe give a better analysis as to how to address those issues from a scientific standpoint. So the letter that is the collection of input from all of the labs, which we tried to kind of put together, um, generally just addresses agreement or disagreement with those particular sections. I think you've had an opportunity to review it. It was just yesterday, so not maybe digest it fully. Um, and the suggestion was for us to propose something different um, if there was disagreement as to the proposed regulation. And to uh, Mr. Fulton's point, that's a little difficult if we don't know what we're solving for. So if we could have some context in the next workshop for why the proposed regulation is necessary, what, as uh, Mr. Fulton said, what problem we're trying to solve for, then from an operating lab perspective, we can try and get some uh, suggestions and collective wisdom on a proposed alternate uh, language for that proposed regulation. 
And consistent with the comments of my colleagues, one of the things that we'd ask um, the CCB to look at is there is a regulation that refers to a number of periodicals and treatises. Some of those conflict with each other. Some of them are outdated. It is difficult for a licensee to understand which specific sections of all of those periodicals they need to adhere to. What does the CCB consider to be quality control and quality assurance in those periodicals that we need to adhere to? And by doing that, I think it'll further um, the lab's understanding of exactly what the expectations of the CCB are and clarify what areas within those treatises we're expected to adhere to. I think what's very unique about this situation is it's the first time that an entire industry has come together in unity. Well, actually, I guess the second time because I presented the last four out, but 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 it's really really the the labs are here and and all the labs for the most part are represented here online. Everybody's here, and so the laboratories want to make sure that the CCB knows that we want to work together with you guys. We want to make sure that the regulations provide for safety for Nevada for Nevadans here, and that the testing is done pursuant to a scientific method. And, and so that's, that's kind of the focus. And um, again, it's pretty unique that you have every single laboratory on the same page and getting all the scientists on the same page, I can tell you was, <laughs> was no small feat by those of us at this table. So, um, and, and big um, congratulations to all the labs for working together and getting all the scientists to agree on these points, which I can tell you again, um, you know, for the labs to come together, this is a, is a very big thing. So Absolutely. Um, let, let me know what, what we can do to help you basically. What, what would you like? I mean, I, I don't think you want me to read through every single provision of my letter. Um, no, so no need to reread. Yeah, there's, okay, all right. So we have it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, and we appreciate it. I mean, yeah, this, this is a lot of really great comments and this is what we were having this workshop for. Okay. Um, as it applies to just the regulations that were just uh, covered in the strong fight, I would note the fact that on behalf of Lettuce Test, I did send a letter challenging the residency requirement, specifically mm -hmm. citing to the privilege and immunities clause. I've addressed this in multiple capacities relative to gaming employees, drivers for tri um, taxi cab companies, as well as limos and LCB has agreed that this is um, a residency requirement in this capacity is otherwise prohibited by the US Constitution. The other thing I noted in that proposal was the fact, a request that going forward that um, 233B 0608 be adhered to and that the licensees be given an opportunity to submit a economic business impact statement as to how the regs are. I get it. This is, again, this is a preliminary workshop. This, I, this, none of this is going to get presented for vote on regs. We were, sure. There's going to be uh, everything with the APA is going to be gone through when we do our, our, the next workshop, assuming the next workshop is going to be a, a final workshop. I just note the fact that the statutory language says any workshop. So we would just like the opportunity as we progress through the app of the regulations um, to know whether or not they impact the company's financially. Thank you. And, and especially in this segment of the industry where small changes can have large economic impacts because the, the testing equipment is so expensive and changes and modifications, um, updating methods and validations, SOP. You know, SOP <laughs> training, um, because it is so technical, is very costly very quickly. Understood. Understood. Yep. Thank you very much. What can we do to help you guys with the next step? I guess that's one of the questions we wanted to ask is, uh, you know, do we need further meetings, further follow-up, to proposed revisions? What, what would be helpful from the laboratories as an industry for the CCB to receive. I mean, we've kind of given you an outline of this stuff here, but we want to hear from you what would be helpful. Well, and we're probably going to have further meetings for the next workshop. I mean, we're going to call in everybody who gave comment and probably sit down and go over certain issues that we have questions on and and try to get some language ironed out. Okay. So we, we're going to do, it's not just going to be nothing to the next workshop. We're going to have a few meetings. Again, it would be helpful to have that context right. in advance. I, I think Absolutely. in order to give meaningful comments beyond this, we need to understand the why. Absolutely, yeah, we can do that. Can I make one comment? Sure. Um, just for clarification, um, just as an overall general uh, point, um, this really started with um, a lot of the uh, directors and the staff that I see in these uh, different laboratories. Um, when we've gone to do inspections, they have asked us for more guidance, more clarification, to let us know what you expect from us. And it just kind of stemmed from that. If we can clarify something, um, 
yes, when this process began with laboratories, there were not a lot of references. More are coming out and more standardized methods are coming out. So it was trying to give the laboratories options and things to reference, <laughs> lacking something else, a standardized method. So it was just kind of the impetus was you all saying, we want some more guidance. We want to know what you expect from us. So it's just as a general context point. Thank okay. you. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else? Yep. Okay. Thanks so much. <laughs> next, next section. Yeah. <laughs> and again, thanks a lot for putting, oh, putting that together. Yeah. Again, that's very helpful. It's really helpful. Um, then we'll just all the comments we just made apply to every the rest of the section. Okay. So. <laughs> Are there any other um, public comment in Las Vegas? Um, any public comment in Carson City? No public comment on Carson City. Thanks, Steve. Um, Sarah, is there any public comment online? There's no online comment. Okay. This is going faster than I expected. Okay. All right. I will move on to the next section. NCCR 11.045 clarifies the font requirements, um, delivery methods, and other changes for R&D testing as well as creating a potential pathway for variances on testing requirements. NCCR 11.050 gives a timeline for the validity of COAs. This is based on the American Herbal Pharmacopeia's recommendation, as well as our laboratory findings that THC degrades at approximately 10% per year. 10% degradation of the active ingredient um, is the threshold for pharmaceutical drug shelf life. And that is what we found is um, it is about one year for those. Um, NCCR 11.053 is a new section which clarifies the requirements for instrument calibration and quality control. And NCCR 11.060 makes some changes to homogeneity testing for edibles. We did receive a lot of really good feedback in that section. Um, so it is a work in progress and um, we'll be making quite a few edits there. Um, but I'd like to open it up for any public comments on NCCR 11.045 through NCCR 11.060 in Las Vegas. Hi, Sarah. It's Lynn Verdrett. Can you hear me? Oh, hi, Verdrett. Yes, I can hi. hear you. Hi. Um, I just, I, I, I missed the, the last window and I just wanted to say, um, when it comes to referencing the publications, I... I also, as a board member, when it gets to us, have a hard time determining which of those publications should apply. So I, that's, that's all I wanted to add to those sections. Okay, understood. And we'll definitely work on clarifying that language and um, specifying um, which ones are applicable where. Thanks. And please be sure to state your name for the record. Sarah from Planet 13. Just wanted to make a comment. Well, I submitted a letter on 11.060, but I wanted to just give a little bit more. Um, I was reading the other public comments and they mentioned concerns about um, getting rid of the 15% variance for purposes of homogeneity testing would potentially um, cause production facilities to target a lower you know, lower THC content. And so I think um, my proposal of adding the word intended to 3B, so that would be the intended concentration of THC of each sample must not exceed THC limits for sale at, uh, in uh, 9.045 section two. I think that addresses um, your concern that perhaps uh, sorry, uh, that perhaps production facilities would be targeting higher than 10 milligrams. It would address that. And I think it would also give us back the 15% variance. So that was, uh, I think that's all. Great. And I really appreciated that submission with the language. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Good morning, Amanda Connor on uh, from the law firm of Connor and Connor, I'm actually here today on behalf of Curaleaf. Um, they were they asked me to comment as they were unable to attend. Um, I know you've received several public comments 
um, about this, but with regards to 11.060, I don't believe the intent of adding subsection B was to make it where the variance, 15% variance goes away um, because subsection A allows the 15% variance. Um, and I would just perhaps suggest much like the previous commenter, um, some language that clarifies that it's the intended concentration of THC or um, so, or to allow that that variance, fifteen percent variance, is still allowed. Um, I think many people read it to mean that you cannot exceed a hundred milligrams no matter what, right. um, and I don't think that that was the intent. Sure, that wasn't the intent. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, good morning, Scott Rutledge, Agenda Partners, uh, here on behalf of uh, Deep Roots Harvest. Just wanted to echo the comments made by Ms. Connor. Uh, Sarah, as well as what was submitted by NCA, that we have some concerns about 11.060, but it sounds like that's getting addressed. So, um, and on 11.050, subsection two about aspergillus, we know that there have been some uh, requests uh, by the NCA. I also represent Green Life Productions. Uh, we think this aspergillus issue is something worthy of a workshop, and we'd love to see that discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. <coughs> Just briefly, Lake Martin, uh, Nevada Cannabis Association, and we did submit a letter and just wanted to echo the comments um, and appreciate the submission from Planet 13 as well, suggesting the intended language. Um, we do believe the existing variance is smart policy, it's sound policy, balancing public safety and fluctuations in testing. And so we'd like to keep it as is, if possible, and work with you if there is any intended language change. I don't know, but I think it's statutorily required. So. Yeah, that, that was based on my belief as well. <laughs> So thank you. Is there any other public comment here in Las Vegas? Okay. Is there any public comment in Carson City? No comment in Carson City. And any public comment online? No online comment. All right. I'll now continue with the remaining amendments to NCCR 11. Here, sorry. NCC uh, oh, hi, Rihanna. I, I just want member to for the record. I just wanted to weigh in that uh uh that I also support the Planet 13 language. I um you know I was I was around when all of this was passed and I know the intent wasn't to limit it to 100 milligrams. So I basically am only weighing in to show that I'm paying attention. <laughs> Thank you, Member Dret. Yes, uh we have a tendency to overcomplicate things that turn out to be very simple. Thank you. <laughs> Um, NCCR 11.065 has been revised to clarify requirements for pesticide residue analysis. NCCR 11.070 specifies aseptic sampling requirements for the laboratory, which is um, typically standard practice. 11.075 um, outlines requirements for remediation, treatment, and retesting of cannabis. And finally, NCCR 11.085 clarifies responsibility of cost for screening or testing, this is another one, um, which sounds like it might need some more clarification as to different um, circumstances that may arise. Um, are there any public comments on NCCR 11.065 through 11.085 in Las Vegas? Any public comment in Carson City? No comment in Carson City. Is there any um, public comment online? No online comment. Okay, well, in that case, I am done with my portion. I'll turn it back to Deputy Director Michael Miles. Now, the, only, the only remaining part is, again, anybody want, this, wants to see any changes in the laboratory regulations, please come up and make public comments. Right now, we'll start off here in Las Vegas. This is a free for all, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I like, we're going to have to. Good morning. For the record, I'm Kimberly Maxim Rushton with law firm Cooper Levinson, appearing on behalf of the Citizens for Public Safety Alliance. I submitted a um, written suggestion with respect to proposals to add two regulations, well, actually, to add one and to amend another. The first recommendation for consideration that I propose is the reinstitution of the ILAC committee. That was the Independent Laboratory Advisory Committee. 
that was initiated back in 2013 with the promulgation of medical marijuana regulations and the statutory authority. Uh, Director Cronkite was a part of that, so she's very familiar with it. Um, I've replicated the language that was previously uh, set forth in Nevada Administrative Code 453A.666. And the basis for the request for consideration is I think that um, when you review the comments that were submitted by the lab specific to the proposed changes, there's a lot of scientific detail in those regulations. And because of that, and because of the nature of the science in which um, the labs are dealing with, we recommend the ILAC committee. It's an objective body in which um, historically it was comprised of professors from the University of Nevada, Reno, the Department of Agriculture, representatives from the lab industry, as well as other scientifically based um, business operators. And in that capacity, they weighed the pesticides and formulated the testing standards that we currently have, at least in large part, um, in the NCCRs. So this would just be another mechanism in which we could, versus having kind of formal public hearings, um, have ILAC committee members in which individuals in the labs could exchange ideas relative to pest pesticide and other type of, of testing standards. The issue that's raised with aspergillus, that would be one in which an advisory committee could weigh the scientific value of repealing the aspergillus uh, testing standard and then report back to the board whether or not that would be advisable and in the best interest of the safety of consumers. So again, I think that there are multiple um, values uh, that could be gained from the reinstitution of the ILAC committee. Uh, the second proposal was specific to the amendment to NCCR 11.050 subsection seven. And that specific regulation is the requirement that the labs uh, turn over the COAs to the cannabis establishment simultaneous to submitting them to the state. As a result of the issue with the inability to collect fees for lab services, the lab, the CPSA would respectfully request that that line be stricken and that the laboratories be allowed to give the COAs when they are paid. In doing so, it will help the collection efforts and it will not otherwise require the labs to subsidize the industry, which they're currently doing. So thank you for your consideration. As always, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. That was pretty straightforward, thanks. Yes, sir. Quickly, again, Alicia Ashcroft on behalf of G3 Labs, we concur with the proposed change to NCCR 11.050 that Ms. Rushton just referenced. Uh, with respect to deleting the obligation to provide the COA to the facility requesting testing. Um, if we simply delete that, we have no issue with providing it to uh, the board through the mechanisms provided, but um, the requirement to provide it to the requesting facility, if that is deleted, would, I think, alleviate a lot of problems and also alleviate some of the suggested additions for um, getting the CCB to help collect invoices. I don't think that would be needed any longer or obligate payment um, because again, if the, if the labs didn't have to provide the COAs until they could condition on payment, I think it would alleviate a lot of those problems. Thank That's you. It. Thank Appreciate you. it. Adam Fulton on behalf of Jennings and Fulton. I agree with what Kimberly and Alicia just said. <laughs> surprise, 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 right? Um, and the majority of the labs and everybody we've talked to so far has agreed with that provision. One of the big concerns, obviously, is the laboratory is getting paid. Same as if you drop your car off to a mechanic shop. Imagine if there was a law that said you drop your car off, and the mechanic has to give it back to you in two days, but you don't have to pay for it, right? Imagine if that were the case. And so I uh, would request you take that under consideration. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Oh, this is yours. Sorry, I'm taking over here. All right, is there any other public comment down? down so? <laughs> this is again, this is just for the laboratory regulations. Oh. We're gonna get into public comment shortly thereafter. How about up north, any comment on the laboratory regulations overall? No public comment on Carson City. How about online, sir? There's no comment online. All right, well, this went quicker than I thought, too. Uh, let's move on to agenda item 
Number four, and it's open to public comment. Any public comment down here in Las Vegas? Can I make up this public comment there? Hi, my name is Patrice Andros for the weather. Came with last prisoners project Americans for safe access. Um, my comment probably had to do with a little bit of the lab re regulations when I hear you guys speak of um, remediation and pesticides. I'm um, being a longtime patient and advocate when I see the quality of the medicine in the dispensaries, it kind of makes me sad. It's kind of hard, dry, there's no trichomes, it's not sticky. Um, I see PGRs, I see pesticides. That has a lot to do with how it burns and that's not really quality and good to be used for consumption, in my opinion, as being a patient. Um, it makes it harsh, you choke, it's not how medicine should be grown. Um, if it was grown properly, it wouldn't have to be remediated. I know um, certain companies like Green Life Production uses good growing practices so that a lot of times that things don't have to be remediated because it's grown properly, so it doesn't have to be radiated to bring it to market. So I think those need to be brought um, up in discussion when you guys are bringing um, pesticides and other things into um, the conversation because it is harmful. I don't want to look 10 years down the line that because you guys are using pesticides and plant growth regulators that people's health was harmed when they were just trying to use this medicine to help alleviate some of their health concerns. And, and that is all for right now. Thank Great. you guys so much. I, appreciate um, it. I would encourage you to go to the next workshop as well for packaging and labeling. Okay. If you have any input on that. Perfect. Thank Thanks you so much. Any other public comment down here in Las Vegas? <clears throat> How about up north? There's no comment in Carson City. Any online? There is no one online to provide comment. All right, move on to agenda item number five. I do want to point out that I know this went quick, but we are going to be setting up meetings, obviously, uh, with the 13 page comments. We want to get together with some of the labs and work this, you know, work as much of this as we can out before the next workshop and hopefully get everybody's buy-in because I know the lab's wanted this, we've wanted this, this has been a long time coming and uh, same with the packaging and labeling uh, next month. So again, if there's nothing else, then I'll just adjourn the meeting. Thanks. Thank